The day is finally here. I'm going to make my first part on my new house, or new to me. Welcome to another episode. For my very first project on the mill, I decided to make some hold-down clamps for my vise. I don't really need them because the clamps that I'm using now are just fine. But I thought it would be fun for a couple reasons. First, I wanted something that was lower profile. You'll see what I mean in a minute. And the second thing is that this is an opportunity to try something I haven't done yet, which is to mill steel. For this project, I'm using 4140 pH or pre-hardened. It's not something I was really familiar with before, but I ordered a, uh, some bar stock from McMaster that they say is at least 25 Rockwell. And from what I understand, that's not really that hard. So I got some 3 8 and quarter inch end mills and uh, decided to give it a try. And as you'll see, it turned out really well. Let's head to the computer and I'll show you the design that I have in mind. Here's the toe clamp that I'm going to be making. You can see it's a fairly simple part, but I'm going to be making out of this bar stock. So one of the things I want to do is to make a second copy of it so that when I'm milling this part here, I can mill in between these and then mill along here. And then I'll just use a saw to cut this off and then probably do a final surfacing operation to get them to the correct length. Before I can do the cam work, I need to set up the tool library. In the tool library, I've already set up three tools, as well as created uh, the two holders. My machine has ISO 20 tool holders, and I put in dimensions just for the part that's below the taper. In other words, the part that will be sticking out below the spindle. So you can see that this part of the geometry is pretty much the same between them, although uh, there are a few differences. But the main difference is this is the larger ER20 nut, and this is the smaller ER16 nut. The way that's done is with edit tool. And you can see there are various rows in here for the different parts of the geometry. So you just put in the, the height of that part and the upper and the lower width. So it didn't take too long. Mainly I just had to do a bunch of measuring to get these dimensions. And I don't think it has to be precise, it just has to be good enough. The next thing I did is I decided which tools would go into which holder. You can see here that I set the tool holder I selected this one of these here and so I said for this tool which is the half inch end, end mill I definitely have to use the ER20 holder because it won't fit in the smaller holder. The other thing I did is in the post processor I numbered each of these so this is going to be tool number four because I have a tool changer. For the 3 eighths I also used ER20 although I could have used either I chose ER20. And then for the quarter inch, I decided to use the ER16. I needed a reference on the side of the part, which is currently facing up, so that when I flip it over, I can set the X0 position to be the same place, which is going to be on the right side. So I need to face it, and to face it, I'm just hand jogging across. Okay, I've uh, plugged in the uh, USB thumbstick, so I'll go over to this program, go over to USB, press enter, there's my file, so I'll say select program, and now it's ready to go. So make sure I have the door closed, and I'm going to set it to 25% uh, rapids, I think, and then I'm going to be really careful on this and see what happens. Okay, it looks good. Perfect. First, I want to deck off the top, just a small amount, so that I have a flat surface. And as you can see here, when I simulate, it doesn't go all the way to the end. I didn't uh, check this carefully, and uh, so that may be one of the reasons it's screeching. Also, I should have had it go off the ends as well. Go ahead to... Uh this program, there's two, uh, press uh, select program, and uh, let's try that one. 
The next operation uses a uh, helix to go down, and then uh, you can see the blue, it widens the hole out. And as you can hear, it's screeching pretty badly. And the reason it's screeching pretty badly is because I am not engaging enough material. So it took me a while to figure this out, but what I need to do is change the ramp angle to something larger, like three or four degrees. So I'm going to try that out the next time I make this part. So I'm going to take it out and uh, flip it over. Okay, this time I'm going to use right here, I'm going to use one of the parallels and uh, pick up the bottom of the part. Okay, and then I'll enter the number into G54Z. Okay, so that's now entered in. I'll go ahead and move the uh, Z back up. I'm using adaptive clearing to remove the material you see here from the top and, and also between the two parts here. If you look closely, you may notice an issue, which is that I forgot to set the X0, and as a result, it's actually offset from the center where it should be. So I realized that and then stopped the program, set the X0, and then restarted the program. But it does mean that I did take a bit of a cut out of here, I think it is. Uh, so I have a little bit of a defect in the part. The boring operation, you can see, was going much better. This is with a one quarter inch end mill, and I was doing 30 thousandths of an inch per time around the bore diameter. Okay, so uh, this is the part. Uh, it looks good. These are uh, two clamps. I'm gonna cut it down uh, the center there. And then this is a, not a finished edge. I will be finishing this edge, this edge, and then the two edges there, and then it should be exactly the way I wanted it. So next step is to put it in the bandsaw and uh, cut it in half. I'm surfing off the one end of the part. It's just a simple surfacing operation to cut it to length and to give it a nice smooth finish. And here's the final operation, which is to face off the final part. Once this is done, it'll be to length, and I can put it in the machine and start using it. This is what I have right now. I have these hold-down clamps, which are part of a hold-down clamping system that I purchased. And they're fine. The only thing I don't like about them is they stick out quite a bit. This is the shortest clamp I have. Back here I have a medium clamp, and then I have an even longer clamp. And as you can see, this clamp that I just made is a lot smaller. This shows you what I really like about this. I've got it uh, hooked in now. This is uh, really easy to take in and out just using an Allen wrench, a T-handle Allen wrench, and takes up a lot less space. So I'm pretty happy with this. The one thing I want to do is I want to blue these so that, uh, or blacken them so that uh, there's an oxide layer that should help protect them against rust. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, please give me a thumbs up, that helps with the scoring engine. Subscribe, please, and also comment below. If you have any suggestions or thoughts about future projects, put those in the comments below. See you next time.